Hi, I'm Joe Feeks, editor of Poultry Health Today, and with me is Guillermo Zavala. He is a veterinarian and a poultry health and production consultant for Avian Health International. Guillermo, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. You've referred to infectious bronchitis as being the eye of the storm. What exactly do you mean by that? Well, uh, infectious bronchitis is certainly the eye of, of the storm from the point of view that it's, uh, if you ask any producer around the world, what are the most important um, diseases from the economic point of view or from the point of view of emerging or re-emerging diseases, by far infectious bronchitis is always at the center. It causes respiratory disease in broilers, to some extent in breeders, and also in layers. And then there's a number of potential complications around that eye of the storm, and that's what I mean by that. And why has it become this, this big storm? You would think that with that much experience with it, maybe we'd do a better job at managing it. The problem is that the virus that causes infectious bronchitis is, uh, it's an RNA virus, and typically viruses that contain RNA instead of DNA as genetic material mm -hmm. are very prone to mutating very fast on us. Uh, we develop vaccines, they work very, very well, and then eventually there are uh, variants of those original viruses that start emerging and against which the vaccines may protect very well or may not protect so, so well. Um, and therefore, we're always trying to play catch up with infectious bronchitis viruses for that reason. And when you are playing catch up, I would imagine that opens a door for some secondary infections to come in as well. Certainly, um, and especially in chickens and uh, whether it's layers or breeders or broilers, they're very prone to catching infectious disease uh, caused by, in this example, infectious bronchitis. But once they catch this viral, viral infection, it's very easy for them to get complicating bacteria uh, because of their anatomy of their um, respiratory system. It's very easy for particle dusts and bacteria to penetrate all the way deep into the tissues of the respiratory tract. And therefore, they get bacterial infections as secondary problems. So, for example, for example, E. coli, that's a classical example. They, I could mention others, but the point is that um, a lot of the complications that occur with bacterial infections are really the cause for economic problems uh, in birds that are affected by bron infectious bronchitis. So you mentioned vaccination as certainly valuable tools uh, or one way to, to help manage this disease or reduce incidence of it. But I imagine a lot of this has to come down to biosecurity. A lot of it comes down to biosecurity, but more than that is keeping a healthy environment. Good air quality, good litter quality, um, intact immune uh, system for the birds. And if you have all those things in place, if you get challenged in the field with bronchitis viruses, then the consequence is not as great. I remember talking to uh, Dr. John Smith Last, uh, last year, and of course he's had a lot of first-hand experience with infectious bronchitis, and he mentioned that, you know, part of the problem is he's got so many poultry operations that are close together. Correct. Well, that's a big part of the problem, um, and this is one of the viruses that, you know, you mentioned the word biosecurity, which is certainly very important for all infectious diseases, but when it comes to respiratory viruses such as infectious bronchitis, it's really very difficult to control that just through biosecurity because the virus is airborne. It can pretty much, quote unquote, float very easily from one farm to another. And uh, one of the interesting things that we see with new bronchitis viruses in the field is that they typically follow a particular highway or a particular route, a particular area. So that tells you how easily these viruses are transmitted when you have a high concentration of poultry in a particular area. You talked about the different variants and how easily this virus mutates. How do you keep track of that? I mean, I know there are, there's diagnostics, but you still need to put diagnostics together with the available vaccines. And how do you, how do you bring those two elements together? It's very important to consider that when you're trying to control infectious disease, especially respiratory disease in this case, it's not just a matter of developing good vaccines or maintaining a good environment or keeping good management for your birds. It's everything together. Um, 
Uh, just as you have to have the perfect storm for bronchitis to cause really serious economic problems and welfare problems, uh, it's the same thing in trying to prevent it. You have to put a lot of things in place um, so that you don't have uh, problems with infectious bronchitis. And certainly vaccination is an, an essential tool for prevention and control, but then there's other things that one has to keep in mind and, and, and essentially good management practices is uh, absolutely critical. So really taking more of a holistic approach, exactly. not just leaning on the vaccine. Exactly. We can't just point fingers and say, well, we have these new monster viruses out there circulating in the field uh, without really paying attention to the basics of poultry husbandry, for example, which for the most part industry does. But sometimes things get out of hand just out of uh, the sheer fact that uh, we have many, many millions of birds in a particular uh, geographic area. Now, I know when you're planning a vaccine program for infectious bronchitis, uh, cross protection comes into play as well. Is there a way of knowing that ahead of time? How can you find the right combination to give you the broadest protection? In reality, what, what one should do when you're investigating an outbreak of infectious bronchitis that is uh, pernicious and is very persistent and you don't seem to be able to get a handle of it, uh, we constantly sample birds out in the field uh, and we constantly, we're constantly looking for new viruses out there. And for that, we use techniques in the lab where we can isolate viruses in um, uh, embryonated eggs, for example. Uh, we isolate the virus, uh, we propagate the viruses, and then we have to characterize them. And the, the way we do that typically is by looking at their genetic components and determining whether those genetic characteristics are still the same as the ones we know or they have started to change on us. And if they start to change, we need to know how many of the viruses uh, that we are isolating from the field seem to be new viruses or have different genetic characteristics. Uh, and of those, how widespread they are. Because you don't, you don't get excited at the first finding, but you, once you demonstrate that you have a widespread problem, then it's time to really think seriously about developing a new vaccine or changing your vaccination strategies. So, Combining your diagnostics with your field application, with your, your epidemiological knowledge, and with your good management practices, you should be able to handle, for the most part, most cases of infectious bronchitis.